Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the least two best methods to make money in Millennium Dawn. What might work for one country is not going to necessarily work for another country, but all the information that you're going to get today from this video, no matter what country you play as, is going to help your economy be much better in Millennium Dawn and help you understand the financial mechanics. Now, I do have one mod turned on that disables Central and South America along with Africa, but all that's for is optimization so the mod can actually run a lot faster and it doesn't affect anything with the economy at all. So with that being out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you all, it's not really a way to make or gain money, but it's really important for this entire video, so I'm going to get this out of the way now. Uh, it's this little gold dollar icon. This is where you're able to actually view your entire economic situation. And you can see down here how much money you're making or losing. Uh, here's how much you're greening in gross income. Here's how much your total expenditures are, which means like how much is being taken away from you every day, how much you're making. And it actually goes from pretty much everything inside of the screen right here, which starts at welfare, health, education, international security, defense, and bureaucracy. So you can literally see down here everything. So yeah, that's just something important you need to see, but it's not necessarily one of the tips today. So starting off, the United States is one of the countries in here. I think there's like four or five countries that have a ridiculously large plane stockpile at the start. So if we're going to go ahead and head down here, uh, let's see, I'm just going to show you. Yeah, there's 1.4 thousand transport aircraft. You don't need that many. Uh, in Hearts of Iron 4, or not Hoi 4, but Millennium Dawn, surprisingly enough, and let me go ahead and refresh this so it's current, this is how much money you're losing daily. If you hover over defense, you'll see that we're spending $4 billion, or yeah, $4 billion on our aircraft. Well, if we go in here and just delete some of our really old planes, like Let's just get rid of all these C-130 Hercules. We'll keep 200 of these for supply because that's more than enough. Uh, we'll keep our strap bombers. We're going to get rid of our Vietnam aeroplanes. We're going to get rid of all our light jets because I don't use those on my carriers usually. I'm going to get rid of these other light jets. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these strike fighters because that's something I don't use. I got a text message. Ignore that. <laughs> um, and for maritime patrol, I'll keep those usually for recon. Um... And I'll delete our super old attack helicopters. So now what we're going to do is let the game out. Oh, and uh, I guess I'll delete our... Actually, I don't know which one of these are old. Um, you know what? Actually, don't delete the helicopters. I forgot those have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Just the Apache helicopters or the attack ones. So now we're going to go ahead and see how big of a difference that made to our economy. Just like that. Took down about a billion dollars. So our air defense is now down $1 billion. So that's something really cool for certain countries. Next thing I'm going to be covering is your international investments, which are these right here. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble actually getting them to show. I think it's the mod I have on. But I've basically done the math here. And one civilian factory, if you're going to actually do a uh, international investment, it ends up costing around... Uh, I wrote it down, $10.7 billion, and you get an estimated $0.497 billion back every week in income. So when you do the math, that takes something like 10 years or not a week or something like that. I think that's monthly actually, but the way I ended up adding it up with a calculator, it'll take roughly about 20 years for one single factory to end up giving you the money back that you put into it. The only time that the civilian factories are actually worth it on international uh, investments is if you're just trying to prop up an economy or you're trying to boost someone else's civilian factories. That's, in my experience, that is really the only way you're actually going to get any kind of use out of them, unless you're playing a 20 plus year Millennium Dawn game, which... I don't think very many people are. So just keep that in mind. Civilian factories are kind of a waste for international investments. Like, it's just not very good. Now, the next thing that we're going to be talking about, the Navy on this mod actually requires a stupidly large amount of income to actually do um, pay for. So as you can see, the United States in the very beginning is paying uh, pretty much $24 billion in Navy cost, and you're only in debt $9 billion. So if you wiped out your entire Navy... You would be making like $16 billion, but obviously 
you can't do that on Millennium Dawn because U.S. Navy and other countries' navies are kind of important for naval invasions and also your own security. So here's a little way you can kind of do a navy downscale without being too costly. So first off, what you're going to do is just go ahead and select your navy, put it all into one large task force, and then you're just going to kind of keep doing what I'm doing now, which is you're just making new task forces with the larger or each type of ship and that's good enough so what you would do is we can see here that all of our submarines we're just gonna okay these are all actually kind of modern let's go ahead and start right to the left no nope. okay okay here we go uh so this ship is 1965 for the year so that's pretty worthless so just put that in a new task force Go down here. All of these frigates down here, 1975. We'll keep those because they're all the same. We need frigates, destroyers. Um, we have a lot of 1995s and 1980s, but we'll keep those for at least a minute. Uh, missile cruisers, same thing. Uh, okay, battleships are totally worthless. You can always get rid of the battleships. Those are like from the 60s helicopter carriers i don't use helicopter carriers as any country because you can really only fit like eight planes some of them you can't even fit that on and they give a short bombardment bonus but it's not really worth it uh so i went ahead and just deleted those uh as our aircraft carriers let's go ahead and get the 1965 and the 1980 carriers put those down here with that um i'll usually just use these carriers um, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and split it in two. So we only have four and then, yeah, the missile subs, we already did that. So right now, currently we're not negative 9.3 billion or trillion dollars currently. So we're just going to go and delete all of this old stuff that we're not going to use, or it's outdated, or we have no need for it, or not as big of a need for it for a while. So now we're going to refresh this and we go from owing 9.3 billion or to four so like you just literally wiped half of the united states dead out like at the snap of your fingers so that's actually something in my opinion that's like hugely effective and i'm not saying to do this i'm just showing you an example if you got rid of your entire navy just doing nothing else you would be in a 14 billion dollar surplus but you can't do that i'm just proving a point to you on how big of a cost the navy is on here to a lot of countries mainly it's the aircraft carriers and the large ships so you can easily do a fleet of destroyers missile cruisers and frigates maybe some submarines and it'll be nowhere near to as cost expensive but the carriers are important because the united states needs to do a lot of air support and stuff like that from the carriers especially if you're going to war with china so or japan later on or whatever so just keep that in mind now, next up, I'm going to show you all how to actually properly use your tax system to gain a lot of income. So the way you access your taxes is you're going to click this little gold dollar sign up here and that opens this economic preview screen. Now, the way you adjust your taxes is by increasing or decreasing here and each country requires a different amount of political power for it, I think. Um, I know the United States, it costs 90 for Russia, it costs 65 for China. I think it costs 40 or 50 to change this. So I'm not sure what actually affects it, but it does change based on whichever country you're playing. So here's currently the thing about taxes. This is basically your civilian factories or your consumer goods numbers. So right now we have a 20% consumer goods and we're in gaining money. This is based off your entire civilian and military factories altogether. Like you will actually gain income from your military factories, as you can see right here. So Russia is gaining a fair bit. <laughs> Russia doesn't really have that many factories though. So you're going to want to decrease this by a lot so that you can get as many as you can get as fast as possible. But here's what you want to do to gain money. Russia does have a big civilian population usually in the games, but in here it says we only have roughly 737 million of it. No, 147 million available. I'm sorry. So if we just increase this by one, that gains us about 0.3 billion. Now here's something you also need to know about doing what I'm about to. 
by increasing taxes, you will decrease your leading party support. So we can see United Russia is at 40%. We're going to increase this. Now it's down to 39. So if we just went ahead and max this out, it also costs stability. So be careful whatever country you're playing. If we're just going to max this out as much as we can, you don't care about civilian factories or anything. And then we start decreasing our corporate tax rate to lower our civilian factories. You can see what I'm talking about. You basically want to lower this number and increase your population taxes and do focuses or any way possible to just increase your stability through focuses and just keep increasing your population taxes because you want a low civilian factory or uh, low consumer goods, but high tax rate. And to prove this to you, you can actually hover over here and it'll tell you, I think see corporate tax rates 25%. But if we just go ahead and like a day, well, it still says 25%, but that is actually how you change it. And I'm just gonna cheat really quick here. Uh, come on. There we go, now it's down to 16. So some of the corporate tax will stay there. I don't know why, but yeah. Also, lowering your corporate tax will also increase your stability. So right now we're at 18%. If we start lowering that, yeah, it doesn't increase as much as uh, this lowers it by increasing it, but you get the idea. And doing this along with doing a naval setback or downgrade will help out a lot, depending what country you are. There's two ways of actually increasing your economy because depending on how many factories you have is how much money you're going to actually get. So the United States is pretty intensive on their military and civilian factories. So if we were to end up decreasing our corporate tax, that every single time decreases our entire income by $1 billion. So here's where the problem starts. I've noticed in multiplayer that a lot of people are going to be decreasing their corporate tax rate, trying to get it to zero while building office sectors, because office sectors, it says right here, will actually gain you money specifically. That's their entire point. It does not matter how many office sectors you have if you have a zero dollar corporate tax, if you have a zero percent corporate tax, because I'm just going to add 2000 political power here just to show you this. Right now, it says for our corporate income, we're gaining $21 billion from that. So if we were to decrease this down to literally zero. Just going to have one more time. You don't gain anything off your corporate anymore. So it's entirely pointless for anyone to be building office sectors if your entire goal is to get $0. Now, if you're going to have, let's say, 10%, consumer goods, that's different because then you'll be gaining money off of your office sectors, but you also gain money off of your civilian factories. And actually office sectors, which are these buildings right here at the United States or for the United States, starting at the 38% tax or 48%, whatever it was, these offices end up netting you around $23.8 billion for each one. Civilian factories end up gaining you $14 billion military factories gain you 91 million yeah that's right million and naval dockyards end up gaining you 70. so what this means is if you're going to go for zero percent consumer goods it's kind of pointless to be building these office sectors i would only recommend building them if you're going to try to keep enough money coming in from your corporate to lower it to about 10 percent because that should open up a lot of your factories to be available um yeah, because now our consumer goods is only like 19% after lowering it, so that's important. Then you can just increase your population taxes on the U.S., but the main part that I'm showing you right now is the huge, huge problem that I've been noticing people do in multiplayer between them just maxing out as many office sectors as they can, and they're like, why am I losing money? I'm on 0% corporate tax, but why? That's because all of your income from industry comes based on your tax rate. So again, you're going to want to build civilian factories if you're trying to get this to zero. Do not build these if you're trying to get your consumer tax rate to zero or corporate. All right, so for the very last thing in this video that's going to do the most 
amazing thing for your economy. Here's how you do it. You go into your little flag, you click that, and you see your entire menu here. You see this right here? This, people don't think they can change. You can't. You just need political power. So it does cost a lot of political power, and certain countries can't get it very early. Like, I think for Russia, it's like 700 to go from stagnation to stable growth. China, I think it's a little bit cheaper, but some countries, it's just unable to be done unless you do no focuses for a super long time or do things to gain you exclusively political power. But if you end up going up on this as the United States, because you just saw our weekly balance is negative 16 billion. Let me just refresh to make sure it's accurate. Yeah. If you increase this through your focuses, like I've done this in multiplayer games before, just increasing those, the United States is now down to refresh. Oh yeah. Okay. So we were negative 16. Now we're negative eight so that actually just right there gave us like what eight billion dollars surplus every week or month or yeah i think it's a week when this updates also uh your uh, administration here this also costs money because this is like how quick you can build military factories how much political power you get and it's not really that big of a change but if you're starting on this one right here as a us and you're you wouldn't be starting on this, but if you went to it pretty quick, you would be gaining uh, or losing four billion a day. And then if you just went down all the way to the bottom, when you'd be, you know, only losing one billion. Um, for this right here, this is basically your social spending. This is a combination of political power and stability. Uh, the United States spends way too much money on this in the game, so I'm just gonna downgrade that. Emergency treatment. I feel comfortable having it there. I feel comfortable having that there. Uh, police and military spending actually isn't that bad. Um, you can also see, by the way, at the very bottom of your little panel here, how much is actually being spent on this stuff. Uh, or you can have this menu open and it'll also tell you how much you're spending on things. So, yeah. So as you can see right now, the most expensive thing for us is healthcare. So we would just lower that for a little bit to get some money coming in. And boom. So this entire menu right here is probably going to be one of the most effective things outside of deleting your Navy, knowing how to properly build your factories and everything, that's going to be a huge, huge bonus. Also, the corruption level also takes money away from you. So it's not much. It's about 2% tax difference every time. So if we just went ahead and lowered this, we're going to refresh this now just by one level. Now we're up another billion dollars. Lower it again. Lower it again. So by going to the lowest tax or... Uh, uh, corruption level the u.s just gained like two billion in a week so i mean that's actually a pretty big deal usually you can reach these kind of things roughly in 2002 i would say is the u.s between that and getting rid of your navy you can have a fairly big surplus coming in i mean i would again would highly recommend you not to get rid of your entire navy but depending on how you do your political powers and everything and maxing out your corporate tax and doing focuses in the united states to gain you stability like uh the democratic one over here that this is just massive stability bonuses all over the place weekly stability bonuses so effectively you could just kind of ignore your stability and it'll just keep going up no matter what tax rate you have so just by changing those things around and changing your tax rate you could be getting 25 billion dollars a week so yeah, that is pretty much how to sort of change out your economy in Millennium Dawn. But uh, yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like comment down below if you have any questions about our stuff regarding Millennium Dawn or if you have any video ideas or things you want me to cover and explain. Um, I don't do these videos crazy often, but I am starting to try to get on a schedule. And also thank you so much to the, all the Patreons who ended up helping and supporting the channel because without y'all, it'd be very, very difficult to actually afford everything a month. So again, thank you so much. And if y'all want to become Patreons too, check out down below and I'll have a little link to that. So thank you so much for watching. I will see y'all next time. Enjoy the rest of your night, day or morning, whatever. Stay awesome.